I'm making this video for an update on my automatic dual sided fireplace with an automatic door. I thought I'd show you what it looks like turned on. I know it's pretty slow, but um, if you've seen the other video that I've made, this is a I definitely choose the quietness over how fast I can make it move up and down. All right, I'll show you how I got it all done. I'm gonna explain how it works. Here, I have counterweights, and these are just pretty much they're just old skate wheels that I've. I'll show you in a second. Um, there's switches here, here, and right up there. Um, on these old skate wheels. I had pulleys, but they were like, I don't know, they didn't have bearings in them. And I, I don't know, I just had these already here with bearings in them, and they're super, super, super quiet and zero resistance. Well, close as I could get to zero, you know. And uh, these weights. I was going to use old window uh, weights, but I couldn't find any. And you know how that works. As soon as I built these, I found like a whole freaking house full of them. But and uh, but it kind of worked out because they're hollow, and I filled them up with tire weights to uh, just get it exactly the way I want it. The way I have it now is I have the door that weighs like I don't know, maybe just I don't know one pound more than these counterweights, and this little motor over here. I actually got that out of a turntable microwave um, motor and well I didn't get it out of one I bought it but um it's funny because Mar I was trying to figure out what to do and I have another video on here where it's like an old drill motor and it's so freaking loud and so fast and it just kept jumping off the track and like acted as like a guillotine <laughs> so I use this little turntable uh, thing. It's like it was like ten or fifteen bucks or something. It, it wasn't anything, but what was cool about it <clears throat> is it turns either way. So if it feels like a load or if it gets in a bind, it'll just turn and go the other way, which I thought was pretty neat. Especially if anything ever failed, it would just kind of bind up and then just keep going in the opposite direction, and it won't like you know do anything bad. <clears throat> so I actually kind of like that. Um, and I guess what I'll do is I'll show you what I have inside of here uh, it's kind of just a bunch of wires and I guess what I'll do is I'll I'll draw a uh, map of pretty much how it, all this is put together and I've made this to where I can take it apart if I had to but I saw my other video and I was like oh, I should definitely update it um, these switches they're pretty much like these little micro switches um, like one side's always on one side's always off and then whenever you switch it you know it gives the power to the other side but that goes to <clears throat> I'll just I'll draw a map for all that alright let me get all this put back together this right here is just the cement board <clears throat> it's like 15 bucks a sheet or something like that so I'm gonna get this put up here and I'll show you but I only have like 15 or no I have about I don't know, 30 or 40 dollars in this uh, this little mantle cover and fireplace trim work I have right, let me get that on there okay all I did was pretty much just flip it up alright so here's my cement board fireplace um, it's like half inch. I can't remember the name. It's been like a, I don't know, a year or two. But I'll I'll put that down there too or on the screen. Um, so I wanted something strong, and fire resistant, um, and I don't know something that looked kind of cool, like concrete. But I just didn't want to, you know, fill something full of concrete. This piece right here. This little heat deflector is what I call it. I have this to just kind of roll the heat, you know, out into the room a little more. And all I did here 
was just pretty much stack layers on top of itself. I know it's like a little beat up, but you know. <laughs> So, and here's the other side. I actually was going to brick both sides, but then I was like, well, I don't want to lock myself into never being able to get behind there and start working on everything. So all the switches are covered. That one up there is kind of invisible, but I mean, no one really notices it. And by the way, I made this my fancy barn door. Um, all right, so let's see what happens. I'm gonna close it. It switches power and it sends it down the opposite direction of where it was. And you can see I'm not, you know, cutting out the audio. I'm talking right over top of it. And that's another reason why I like using that little <clears throat> turntable microwave motor because it's so quiet. So, I mean, if someone has to go into the bathroom at, like, 2 o'clock in the morning, you can't even hear it. So, it is slow, but I like, you know, quiet over speed. <clears throat> the door is, uh, like, an eighth inch. I can't remember how many ga what, what gauge, but it's, like, eighth inch steel. But that's it right there, and it's closed. Pretty neat. Um, <clears throat> I'll go turn it back on. It's already started to come back up. I'll come in here and show you what it looks like from the other side. And what's really, really neat about this, <clears throat> you could uh, really, really, really crank up the heat uh, whenever you're getting out of the shower. <clears throat> And it just, it'll make it 200 degrees in here if you want it to. So it's really, really nice whenever you're getting out of the shower and, you know, you're cold. Um, <clears throat> we've had this for about two years now, a fireplace in here. And so what I have here is I have another piece of steel that kind of really, really, it absorbs a lot of the heat, but it also just pushes, it lets the heat go out. I don't have to worry about it, you know, getting up in there too much. And also, I have some more, I have a lot of brick just kind of filled all the way up into here, <clears throat> which kind of absorbs a lot of the heat. But these towels, they stay, like, warm, but they're not, like, I don't even know how much, like, a heated towel rack heats up towels, but, like, I would say I need to measure it. Because, I mean, they're cool right now, but usually they're like, I don't know, they might be like 85 degrees. Like, even if I'm in the shower and I'm just, uh, you know, in there for, I don't know, 20 minutes, or if she's in there for 20 minutes, whatever, like, and the fire just cranked all the way up, it's like it never gets over like 85 degrees. So I'm not ever really worried about it. The only time we ever crank that up is when we're in the shower anyways just because we like it warm whenever we get out. But, it's pretty neat. I just thought I'd make a, an update to how it was the first time, because the first video, I was excited that I actually figured out all the switching and everything, and it's pretty neat. It's like, the door's going down. Let me get down here. But it's just really, really slow. But that's fine with me. I think I hear the pilot, I think the pilot light is louder than the door, or the motor. So, really, really neat. And here's my little control. I really feel like I should get an automatic one now, but I don't know. It, the temperature stays pretty cozy in here, so. There it is. Alright, so I start off with my power. I have three different switches, one by the door, one at the top of the door, one by yeah, my sliding door, then the, the fireplace door, one on the top, one on the bottom, and the 
little turntable motor. And that's pretty much all the electronics or equipment that I use to accomplish what I'm doing. All right, so now what I have is a uh, constant power fed to the switch, which I think this is on the center pin, pin but I'm, I just drew this line so you could see, um, you know, the direction of all the power. So that power ran up to this switch all the time, and whether it's open or closed, it just changes the sides of where it actually sends power. So whenever the door is open itself, it's always sending power power towards the motor to keep the door open um, but I have a switch in between that so whenever the door is actually closed it'll just kill the power to the motor to keep it from just running and you know um, so now whenever I close or slide the door um, closed it turns this over and switches uh, the power direction to you know close the motor and since this motor is a uh, it changes directions all by itself depending on you know the load I've never had a problem and it's been like this for I don't know like a, I don't know a year and a half and I've never had any problems with the door you know or the motor you know whatever because it doesn't take much you know if it's if it feels like it's in a bind in one direction whenever you put power to it it'll just change directions and go the other way uh, which is really really nice and it helps out and keeps me from having to have anything like you know switch polarity and you know, start changing the directions and everything. But it's really a simple design, um, you know, but that's how I do it. So that's what it looks like. Um, let me know uh, uh, what you think of this video. I like uh, tinkering around and, you know, building stuff. It's like crazy. Um, you know, like, like this little chandelier here. Um, I went to Lowe's or Home Depot and I was like, like four hundred dollars for a chandelier, and I was like, I don't know, they just look really, really cheap, cheaply made, and I was like, man, I could probably build one of those for a lot less. And not that it was less, it just, you know, I don't know. I like it. It looks, you know, really, really strong. But I don't know. I just like doing stuff like this. So I don't know. If you like this video, let me know. Um, I do stuff like this all the time. So all right, thanks for watching.